In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build out your own voice assistant where you can have conversations with a multitude of different LLMs. So you can sort of think of this akin to something like Siri or Google Assistant. First, I just want to give a quick demonstration on how this will work. GPT, how far away is the moon? GPT 3.5 here. The moon is approximately 238,855 miles away from Earth. Perplexity, what's the biggest news story right now? Perplexity here. The biggest news story right now is the Pentagon adding new details about Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's secretive hospital stay and the delay in telling President Biden. The first thing we're going to do is just create next app. So you can go ahead and bun create next app, name it whatever you want, and then we're just going to be using that as the starting off point for our application. Off the bat, just create a .env file. You're going to have to get an API key from and perplexity. Now, perplexity and OpenAI are slightly optional if you don't want to use those endpoints. Additionally, if you want to use other APIs, LLMs, you can go ahead and hunt down those API keys. By the end of the video, you'll have a good handle on how to incorporate any LLM really into this. I have things organized in two different files just to keep it succinct and easy to understand throughout the video. The first thing that we're going to do is just import the necessary hooks from React. Since we're using TypeScript, we are going to be setting up some of those types throughout the application, which you'll see here and there. Now we're going to wrap everything within our home component, and then we're going to run through a handful of hooks. We're going to have these different hooks for whether it's recording, playing, we're going to have one for the transcript, the model that's selected, as well as the response. And then we're going to have a loading state as well. So we're also going to have some ref hooks. This is going to be to detect any silence within the application. This is the function that's going to get applied to each of those bubbles on which model is responding. So we'll give that slight pulse back and forth on say if it's GPT-4 or if it's GPT-3.5, depending on which model is responding, it will just pulsate back and forth on the front end for you. Next, we're going to set up the main function of how this essentially works and sends everything to the back end. What we're going to do is we're just going to set that loading state. That loading state will create that spinner and that spinner will be applied to the back of that bubble there. Next, we're going to see if there's already a model keyword that's determined. And if there's not one, we're going to just default it to GPT-3.5. For instance, if you don't specify, hey, GPT-4, it's going to go ahead and default to GPT-3.5. But you can go ahead and default this to whatever model you'd like. So if you want to use a local model or a free model or maybe a model where you have some credits, you, you could you could swap that in here as well. So first we're going to stop recording and a lot of this will make sense as we go through it. So for the actual post request, what we're going to be sending to the back end is going to be the message that we use from the voice API within the browser. And then we're also going to send back the model keyword. Next, we're going to go ahead and see if it's an audio file. If it's an audio file, we're going to go through, set that it is playing. And then on end, once it has stopped playing, we're going to start the recording again. Essentially, whenever that voice is responding back to us, it's not actually listening to our microphone. So you don't have to run into scenarios where it's sort of recursively listening to the responses and it's triggering and transcribing and puts you in a loop that you don't want to have. Then we're just going to have some simple error handling. Then we're going to set the loading state back to false once it's all done. Next, we're going to set up our individual model bubbles within our handle result. What we're going to be doing here is this is going to be where we go ahead and create that transcript that we're going to go ahead and send to the back end. Then we're also going to detect whether there is a silence for a period of two seconds here. So that's what this 2000 is. Then from here, we're going to go ahead and determine all of the different model keywords that we have. So this is going to be where you specify all of the different models that you're going to be using in your application. So you see GPT-4, Plexity, et cetera. And from there, we're just going to go ahead and check the first three words on whether that model keyword existed. So if you think about it, if you say something like, hey, their model name, it will be able to detect that. Or you can just go ahead and trigger the model name within the first word or, or second word if you wanted to. Similar to what we did earlier, we're going to go ahead and set the default model if there isn't one that's detected to GPT. I use for GPT 3.5 this GPT keyword, and you see here that you can really specify whatever keywords that you want. But the thing that you'll have to contend with is you'll have to see how that voice PI returns it. So for GPT-4, for instance, when I said that keyword, it puts it all within one string typically, and you'll have to play around with all of them a little bit to see what works. Like an example was when I tried to use Mistral, it never got that right. So I use Mixture for the, you know, Mixture of Experts. 
for that keyword. So you can play around with these, but you could use a name if you wanted to. So you could say, hey, Joe, or hey, whatever, to trigger these as well if you wanted to. So then we're just going to go ahead and send that transcript to the back end with our detected model. And then we're going to go ahead and set our transcript back to blank. This is going to be how we set up the WebKit speech recognition and all of that. Now, the neat thing with this is you don't need to use something like Whisper. So the latency is going to be significantly decreased for not having to wait for those results. But the trade-off with the web speech recognition API is it might not have as high quality results as Whisper, but it's sort of at a trade-off like everything in programming. So from there, we're just going to use a simple cleanup for when our component unmounts. Then we're going to create a function just to stop recording. So if you just go ahead and click that button to stop the recording, and then we're also going to handle when the recording starts. So if you just go ahead and toggle that button within the center there. Next, we're going to go ahead and set up our JSX. The first part of our JSX, we're going to have the area where it shows that it is listening and it's going to show you the transcript. So I found this helpful, especially if you're trying out different keywords to actually see everything to make sure that it's working and that it's detecting your voice correctly and all of that. Next, what we're going to do is we're just going to render out all of those model bubbles. This is the JSX that we set up earlier, a little bit higher in the application here. Within this, we're just going to specify the different models, the keyword, as well as what we want to have displayed visually within the model bubble, as well as their colors here. Pretty straightforward. Then within the center there, I have positioned where our button to handle the toggling on and off of the recording and listening and transcribing and all of that. From there, we just have the latter half of all of our other models. So from here, we're just going to go ahead and create a new route. So within Next.js, you can create API chat and then route, and then we're going to go ahead and hop right within our route.ts. The first thing that we're going to do within the back end is we're going to import a handful of dependencies here. So if I just open up the package shot, what we're going to install is basically everything here. So we're going to install these Langchain packages, API, .env, Langchain, and OI. Now, once those are installed, what we're going to do is we're just going to go through and you'll start to see what all of these are doing as we fill this all out. The next, what we're going to do is we're going to initialize the perplexity SDK. The way that perplexity decided to implement their node version of their API is with the API package. So that is what this dependency is doing here. Next, we're just going to go ahead and configure our environment variables. Those environment variables that we had at the beginning of the video, this is going to be where we go ahead and access those. Similar to the front end, we're just going to set up some features to enable all the TypeScript types to work as they should. Next, we're going to initialize the OpenAI instance. We're going to create a function that is going to be how we interact with the text-to-speech OpenAI endpoint. We're going to have this reusable function where we create the audio. We're going to be using the TTS1 endpoint. We're going to create a function. And what this function does is it takes in the message that we get back from the LLM after it responds to our transcript. And then we're also going to be able to specify a unique voice for each LLM. So you'll be able to swap these out for whatever voice you like. There's also a different model where you can get an HD model, so higher quality voices if you like. And then this function, all it will do will essentially return us that MP3 within a base64 form that we're going to send to the front end. Next, we're going to set up our post handler. So within the post handler, we're going to extract that message that we get from the front end. And then we're going to, similar to what we had on the front end, is if the model isn't specified, is we're going to specify it to that GPT-3 model. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just remove the first word of the string. This is something you could probably put some more sophisticated logic here, but the thought here is say if you do say something just like GPT or perplexity, that word isn't going to be passed into the LLM. From there, we're going to set up our intro message. Next, we're going to initialize an intro message. We're going to set the base64 audio. And this is going to be where we put a lot of the different variables depending on the condition. From here, we're going to go ahead and give a common prompt to all of the models. So we're just going to be passing in directly within the message of all of these models the same message and we're going to specify for it to be precise and concise and never respond in more than one to two sentences. The way that this is set up, since not all of these models that we're interacting with are built into Langchain, we're going to be able to see different examples on how you could incorporate something like the Perplexity API 
which isn't yet incorporated in the Langchain.js version. Next, we're going to use this if else statement. You could also use a switch if you want, or potentially a hash map if you have an awful lot of different models. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to specify the voice that we're going to use. We're going to specify the intro message. So you saw in the demo that it responds back with the model name. It's going to have the model name and then the message. Depending on the model is we're going to instantiate within each case, you can go ahead and declare the LLM that you want to use and if it requires an API key or any setup like that. So you'll see for some of the Langchain ones that it's going to have this similar syntax here. And then we're going to have an intro message. So in the example, you saw that it responds back with the model name and then the message. And this is going to be where you specify the voice. So I plugged in a handful of the different voices from OpenAI. So I should cover just about all of them, I think, within this example. So similar for GPT-4, you can go ahead and specify the model name within the declaration for the LLM. And just like here, we're going to have the intro message as well as the voice. So very similar for a lot of them. Now for the Olama ones, the way that it works is if you have Olama running and you have the models downloaded. So the one thing for this is if you want to use the Olama models, you will have to make sure that you download the specific models. On my machine, I have the Mistral model as well as the Llama model all installed, ready to go. So similar here, we have the intro message and then a different voice. Also here, I specified for Mistral, local Mistral, because I am also using the Mistral endpoint from Perplexity. The Mistral endpoint from Perplexity is very fast for inference. So exact same setup for Llama 2 with just a few different options here. Just like the Olama Mistral setup for the local Llama setup, is it has basically the same setup just with the llama and voice swapped out. Then for the Mixtrol model, this is going to be where we start to play around with the Perplexity API. Now it's pretty easy to interact with this SDK. It's a little bit of a different structure and syntax as well as a schema that you have to contend with. But nonetheless, it's set up in a way where a lot of the variables are going to be reusable like the intro message and voice. And the only thing that you have to substitute is this area when interacting with the Perplexity API. Next, we're going to set up the Perplexity model. So this is a really neat model where you can get up-to-date information. If you haven't used Perplexity, I encourage you to definitely check it out. Then from there, we're just going to set up the Llama 270B model. Once we have all that set up, we're going to go ahead and create our full message. We're going to add the intro message and the full message back from the LLM and create the full message that we're going to send within Create Audio. And actually just looking at this, I could go ahead and remove this intro message from both the argument there as well as this parameter within the function. So we don't actually need that. And then we're just going to be sending back the JSON within that base64 string. We're going to be specifying that it is audio MP3, and then we're also going to be passing back the model name. So that's pretty much it. So there might be a couple tweaks that I make once the repository goes live, but overall, I'm going to keep it largely the same. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, subscribe, consider becoming a paid subscriber on Patreon or on YouTube. Otherwise, until the next one.